So today you are going to learn how to create or recreate famous works of architecture using Google Drawing. First make sure you're signed in to Google. Uh, you'll notice that Drawings doesn't show up in your waffle, so a good way to get to a new drawing is to just type in docs.google.com slash drawings with an S. We'll take you to a new blank drawing. It takes a moment to load, and then we're ready to begin our drawing. Now that we are uh, ready to begin the drawing, you want to check back at the slideshow I shared with you, find the image that you want to copy or draw from. Here's a picture of the Pantheon. I'll have to put a better picture here so that we can really see the dome as we can in the first slide. You can see it a little better here in the thumbnail, but this is good enough for the demonstration. So first I want to start with my dome. Here are some of my drawing tools. The shapes are the ones we really want. Um, we're really going to focus again on the shapes. So when I come over, here's a nice dome, but you'll notice that it's rotated 90 degrees. So if I choose that, if I click and drag, I can distort the dome, make it really tall, extra wide. If I hold shift while I drag, it keeps it in proportion. So it gets wider as it gets taller, or it gets thinner as it gets shorter. That's a good way to keep the dome in proportion. That works with most computer imaging programs. So I'll make my dome. Pops up, it defaults to a blue color. Uh, here is my paint tool. Now that it's selected, I like to fill, use my fill colors as I go so that it saves time and I don't have to look around and reselect. So I'll pick a nice medium gray tone. And the dome is sideways, so I want to rotate it. If I go to Format, or I'm sorry, arrange, we have rotate. There's free rotate, but because it's already at a 90 degree angle, I just want to flip it backwards as the clock would go backwards. I'm going to rotate counterclockwise, and my dome is where I need it to be. I can try to center it on the page a little more. Those red guide marks that pop up tell me it is centered on the page. If I pull down the horizontal line, will tell me when it's centered horizontally. But because it's uh, something that will be at the top of my architecture, I'm going to leave it towards the top of my page. With my dome done, or at least started, I can go back and check my original image. And I notice this area called the freeze is a triangle shape. So I go back into my architecture. I deselect my dome. I go into shapes, and now I'm going to look for a nice triangle. Here's the triangle. If I start at the bottom of my dome, click and drag. Well, this is an odd shape, huh? Well, I picked a bad triangle. So, one thing I can do is get this to half the size I need. If I center it. Bring it in a bit. One thing I can do with this is, let's shrink it a bit, I can copy it and flip it. So if you think back to word processing, Holding Command and C will copy, Command and V will paste. Remember, you're going to use Control if you're at home on a PC. Control C for copy, Control V to paste. Now I have two of the same triangles. This one I need to flip. So I'll go to Arrange again. Instead of rotating this time, I'm going to flip horizontally. Think of it like turning the page backward in a book. It's going to flip over. I can line them up. And now I have the freeze created for uh, my Pantheon. Another thing I can do now that it's created is select them both by holding shift when I click on each one. Arrange. I can group them and now they are one solid shape whenever I go to select them. So I can alter as I need to. But now you've learned to uh, copy and paste or reviewed copy and paste and we've learned to flip horizontally. Now that I have my freeze in place, I go back and check it against the original drawing and you, or the original image, and I can see that there's actually a nice rectangle piece behind the freeze. If you look here, it's about as wide as the dome. Well, I neglected to put that in our Google drawing, so I'll go back to shapes, I'll select a rectangle, 
So as I said, it's about as wide as the dome, maybe a little wider. So I'll click and drag. Get it where I need, but now it's in front of my dome. So if I go to Arrange, I don't want it in front, I go to Arrange, Order. If I send to back, it's going to actually go all the way to the back behind everything. A mistake like that, Command Z will undo or edit undo. Let's try again. Arrange, order, send back word. We'll send it behind the freeze. Now I can line it up where I need it to be. As my dome's a little long, can shorten that. And I neglected to change the color of my freeze. So let's select that freeze. Uh, because we use two triangles to create that instead of a single triangle, I don't like that line in the middle. I could take that out by choosing a triangle or a line color and then making sure the fill color of my freeze is the same and the line will be absent. Okay, so let's add a little color to this guy right here. I go to my fill color. I don't want to use all the same colors. It starts to get a little flat looking and we want to create some depth. So let's play around with a little bit. Things that go back, sometimes we want to make it look a little darker so that it really looks like things are coming towards you. And again, you can always change the colors as you work. Let's look back at the original image. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like eight columns on the facade. So if I go back to my original draw or to my drawing, I need to insert a shape. That is good for a column. So just clicking a regular uh, rectangle tool. Let's start first with, and we can play with the height. We can compare back to the original drawing and see that might be a little long what I made. So I'll shrink it a bit. And we said we needed eight of them. So maybe I'll make it a little thinner, make sure they fit. If I copy and paste, I can start to distribute columns throughout. My fourth one should probably be center, which means these should be about halfway through. Once I've copied, I only need to hit Command-V to paste from that one. It's already in the memory. The column's already there in the memory. I don't have to keep copying, just pasting. Now. Put a few more in. And because it's eight, I shouldn't have one dead center. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have to redistribute. It gets a little tricky, but that's fine. Now, one thing I can do, I'll select these guys, all eight, and go to Arrange, Align. I want to align their tops. Now, I could also go to Arrange and Distribute horizontally, and it makes it nice and even for me. So, even though I eyeballed as best I can, you can see there were some changes there that the computer could do for me. Next, while they're all selected, if I go to Arrange, I can group them. And now when I click away and go click on any column, they're all selected. So you can see, one click, they're all selected. They're one group. It makes it a lot easier to, now that they're distributed and aligned, it's a lot easier to edit them. Let's add the color we would like. Same color as the freeze. And on to the next step. Okay, with those columns ready, now I'm on to check my original image. And I have my columns in, I have the freeze, the rectangle, the dome in the back. I am missing below my triangle, or the freeze, another rectangle that holds this inscription. So if I go back to my drawing, I might need to move my freeze up a little bit. And does the point go above that rectangle? Let's check. Looks like it's pretty 
even. So if I move it up, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And let's check the original drawing again, or the original image. It's a little thinner underneath. Again, you're not going to get every detail in a simple shape like this. The aim with this project is to make a simple, simplified version. You're not going to get all the nice detailed carvings you would get or in, uh, embellishments made by the artists and the craftsmen along these or even the uh, Corinthian columns up here. We're not going to be able to recreate them in Google Draw. We're doing a simpler version. Let's give that a slightly darker color. And now we have that underneath our freeze. The next step is to put in the text. Okay, so now I'm ready to put in the inscription. If I look back at the original drawing, this is in Latin. My Grippa LF Costera, I'm not going to butcher the language. Um, one thing you can do is you can certainly put in a text box and look back and forth or write a note and copy it then by typing. Or you could do a quick Google search for Pantheon inscription and find out that it was put, it dedicated um, right here. Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, three-time consul, made this. So you can take the original inscription. Here I just highlighted. If I hold Command C and copy it, come into my drawing, take a text box. Here's my text tool. Click and drag over the shape I want. Command V to paste it. There it is. Now let's edit that text. It doesn't look too pretty. So I could use my arrow tools to center it. I can select it. I can go to format, text. Let's see. Oh, no, don't want any of those format options. Here we go. Let's look for a font we think would look closest to this. So again, selected, go to your fonts, look through, oh, this might be cool. It's a little small. You can change the sizes right here like you would in any normal word processor. So you get the size you like. And one thing I could do if the text box is Smaller is select the shape behind it by holding shift, arrange, align, centers, boom. Now I just need the rest of the Pantheon behind those columns. What shape would I use? How could I arrange it once I put it in to get it back there? Hint, hint, that is up to you. Remember, you don't. I just chose the Pantheon for my demonstration. Your slideshow has a lot of great works of art. The Taj Mahal, one of the cool things here is to get that reflecting pool in. The Duomo in Florence. Try to, you can just work on the dome, or if you can get the whole image in, would be fantastic. There's lots of little domes here to work with. Look through, challenge yourself, take risks, see how you do.